Hi guys, welcome back to Cerny's Journey's Kids. We're going to do a virtual road trip to Iowa today. Corey, you have anything you want to say? No. Okay, well, hi guys. Thanks for joining us again. Today we're going to talk about Iowa. If you don't have it, CerniesJourneys.com, you can get a map to print and follow us along on our journeys or do your own journeys. All right, guys, let's find Iowa on the map. Right here. Uh, correct. So Iowa is in between or the border states of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Missouri, Nebraska, and South Dakota. So it's in the middle of the country. Um, it was the 29th state to join the United States in 1846. Uh, the capital of Iowa is Des Moines, um, and it's known as the Hawkeye State. Um, so some cool facts about Iowa um, wanted to tell you about. There's a reason why we have our little piglet here. Guys, you, gotta, you wanna introduce our pig? Wilbur. Who's this, Cora? Wilbur. Wilbur. Yeah, Wilbur. He's named Wilbur after Charlotte's Web. So uh, the reason why we have Wilbur joining us today is because a fun fact about Iowa, there are more pigs than humans um, in Iowa. What? Like, I know, right? So there's about 3 million people that live in Iowa. Guess how many pigs there would be? 4 million. No, if there's more pigs than humans, it's a 1 to 4 ratio. So there's about 21 million pigs that live in Iowa. I know, right? So we figured, how cool would it be to have Wilbur? 21 million pigs. I know, that's a lot of pigs. So another cool fact about Iowa is 92% of the land in Iowa is actually used for farming. So it's farmland. So again, not very populated, um, even though it is a pretty large state. So today we're gonna do, a, we're gonna go on a few different uh, field trips. Uh, the first one is to talk about John Deere Tractor. So if you go to Waterloo, Iowa, they have the John Deere Tractor and Engine Museum. So I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about John, John Deere. So we have our, our tractors here, and these were actually mine when I was a kid. Um, and so I passed them down to, to, to our kids. Um, but John Deere actually was the name of the person who started the John Deere company. He was actually born in Vermont, but in 1836, he moved to Illinois um, to avoid bankruptcy, which means he was going broke. Um, he, was a, he was a blacksmith by trade, which means he worked uh, with metal. And so when he moved to Illinois, he started doing not only general repair on um, equipment, but he also manufactured things like pitchforks and shovels. So um, that kind of set him apart from others who were doing things of, of that sort. And of course, at that point in time, in, in the 1800s, um, most people were using shovels and pitchforks instead of tractors. There was no tractors. So can you imagine doing a whole field as big as the fields can be and just doing it with a shovel and a pitchfork? How awful. I didn't so, know what that meant. Yeah, well, so hence came John Deere. And so John Deere started his company, um, and he started doing, uh, sorry, my, my computer just decided to stop. He started to do, um, make things like these equipment to help with the farming that needed to happen at, in the farms. That's so really cool. it is really cool. So things like tractors mm -hmm. and combines and other things to help chop down wood is or... That back to Oh, well, please don't break it. I'll have to get it fixed because that's actually kind of a cool thing. Um, so the cool thing about um, the John Deere Museum, uh, Tractor and Engine Museum, is you can go and explore all of these things. And in fact, we have a museum in Chicago, um, the Science and Industry Museum, which they do have some tractors. Remember when we went on those? Oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. Cool. How big are those? Big. They're huge, aren't they? I mean, I went in it. I, you did, but the tires, the tires alone are gigantic. It's gigantic. like this big, but it's huge. Right. I mean, you probably wouldn't even come up to the middle of the wheel. So anyways, go to um, deer.com. And if you go to deer.com, so it's D-E-E-R-E.com. Oh, it's a deer. Well, it's a deer with an E, right? There's a, um, a link on their website to um, discovering fun learning activities for kids to do. There's about six different videos you can watch 
um, on the different equipment about tractors and combines and all that stuff. So it's kind of fun for kids, probably a little bit more for boys than girls, but still fun. They also have um, downloadable color pages there too, where you can download pictures of tractors or animals, fun fun animals that you can, you can color too. Um, so definitely would recommend checking out that. Next up, we're going to go to, and I say this wrong, so I'm gonna try my best. It's the Effigy Mounds National Monument. So this is a place that Jamin found in doing some research. Um, and it's actually a National Park Service um, monument too. So that's the cool thing. You can go on nps.gov and actually find some information on it. So let me tell you a little bit about this place. It is um, an Indian, American Indian ceremonial mounds. Um, and it's really cool because what it is, is it's about 2,500 acre monument that preserves over 200 um, Native American mounds. Um, three, 31 of those, um, they formed in the shapes of bears and birds. And so they were um, using these as burial grounds for their people. And so they've made this a monument and it's, and it's really kind of cool. Um, if you go to nps.gov, you can look at um, what some of the mounds look like and you can actually do some exploring on your own um, too to find out exactly why they did it, what they would bury there, um, and other things like that, which is kind of really neat because it takes us back in time to see how, um, you know, some examples of how um, Native American Indians really uh, preserved uh, their belongings and their people. So I think it's kind of cool. Ah, I'm tired. Yeah, okay, great. And so then um, the last place that we're going to stop at is the National Mississippi River um, Museum. Again, this website um, has a ton of resources for um, education for kids. Um, there is, I can't even tell you how many things here. Um, if I just kind of glance, they have a tour of the museum. They have different ways in um, how to make cornbread, um, learn about different historical collections, learn how people lived. Um, so the reason why you focus on Mississippi is if you look at Iowa, the Mississippi River makes the border on the east side of Iowa. So it's kind of cool to talk about the Mississippi River. We specifically decided to focus on the North American beaver. So for a multitude of reasons, one, it's big, it's big um, along the Mississippi River, but we've actually experienced, had some beaver sightings ourselves um, where we are. So let me tell you a little bit about the beaver. The beaver is actually, what do you, what do you think of beavers? Do you think it's a mammal? Mm-hmm. Yes. It's not. Well, the beaver is a semi-aquatic. You know what that means? No. no. It means, it's, uh, aquatic means swim. So a beaver swims. It can swim. I know. As we knew that, but it's a rodent. You know what that means? No. no. Well, that means it's kind of like a rat or a mouse. Those kind of things. So that's what a beaver is. And it's really big. It's actually the second biggest rodent in the world. Mm -hmm. Yep. They bigger can, than me? No, not bigger. Well, maybe in pounds wise, there are some. The typical American um, beaver is um, 24 to 71 pounds. So they can be bigger than you guys. But they're typically two and a half to three feet long. So they're shorter than you. So they're, they're chunky. They're like tea, teapots. Mm, They're probably, nice and round. I'll probably be, um, I'll probably Give it another be, year and you'll be there, buddy. Yeah, probably. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the other thing about beavers is they're, they're mostly nocturnal. Do you know what nocturnal means? No. Mm -hmm. No? It means they, they come out at night. That's when they do all their work. They sleep during the day and they come out at night. So, that's, that they're workers mm -hmm. at night. Mm-hmm. So, Tell, tell them what we've seen when we've gone hiking. Have we seen some beaver stuff? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? What have we seen? Beaver, sh beaver houses. It's a, yeah, that's hot right. Hot done, hot done. Yep, they, they, call them, they call them a lodge. I it's kind of like a hut. Yep, do you know what beavers make their, their lodges out of? Sticks, Sticks and, and mud. Sticks and mud, that's right. 
And they also can build dams in the middle of canals or ponds or rivers. I was going to say dam. Yep. So they can be somewhat of a nuisance depending on where they are. However, they're really also good um, for the environment too because they are their own natural engineers, which is kind of neat. And the, the other thing about beavers is, are they're the only, um, other than humans, they're the only other um, animal on the planet that can actually change their environments and, and do it pretty easily, which is kind of cool. They can up and move. So typically, uh, a beaver lap lives about 10 years. So again, we talked about beavers, and the reason there, there's, um, if you go on to rivermuseum.com, um, in the educational resources area, there's actually a video talking about beavers, um, talking about uh, what they use beaver pelts for. So the pelt is the skin, right? The skin and the fur back during the trading days. Um, and then, um, what, how they actually make their lodges and what they eat. So um, that is it for our virtual road trip. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about the John Deere tractors, about um, the national mounds, um, the, and about the beavers. We enjoyed having you, and we'll see you next time. Like and subscribe. Bye. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Bye.